Hey, you what's, go- what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a little bit late. It's- Anyhow, that's, uh, I'm that, here. That's all right. Um, we got here. Yeah, one second. One second, Tim. We got our man, Mr. Tim right. Ward, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday, folks. And you can get hold of Tim every trading day at Ord-Oracle.com. That's Ord-Oracle.com. And you know what, Tim? You know what's so funny about that? I was listening to you, Tommy, and Jacob. And I always say Ord-Oracle. And I heard... Jacob saying hyphen. I said, oh, that's what it's supposed to be, a hyphen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, pre- appreciate the, the call out. Absolutely. So, kidding um, me? Where were, you, where were you Tuesday? Um, I just couldn't make it. Yeah. All right. I just couldn't make okay, it. Okay, whatever. Yeah. So, but um, actually, I sent you over some charts. We can take uh, a look at them. I got them. We, we want to start with number one? Yeah, actually, that's actually flip the chart four and five, which is on the S and P's. No problem. Four and five. Here we go. I get four right here. Yeah. Yeah, four. Because I'm thinking this is kind of an important area. I did get long last Thursday. Yep. And the top window is the ten day average of the trend. Yes. And the chart goes back. It looks like about a year or so. And I just shaded the areas in pink. When the ten-day trend got above 1.2, and over the last week or so, you know we're in that shade. Well, we only hit 1.19. You know, this is not a perfect science. It's not like math. One plus one is two. Yeah. Uh, but one point, I had a couple of different days there, or ten-day periods, where that ratio did hit 1.19, and I shaded that in pink. And we're in that vicinity right now, and usually. You're supposed to see panic. Panics happen when the trend is above 1.2 or near 1.2 and higher. And usually when you get to a support area, that's where the panic should occur at if actually that area is going to be support. Yes. So uh, so we got down to, I said in previous on your show, I thought the market had plenty, pretty good support around that 120 area. And if that area is going to be support, that's when the, the the ten day trend should get up around one point two or higher. And sure enough it is. Not saying the you know, can we go a little bit lower maybe. But anyhow, we're in the vicinity right now that uh uh it's a good place for the, the bottom to form because there's a trend line across there. It's pretty much uh, the previous highs, basically the highs of uh or late or uh, looks like about August of 2022. That yeah, just stay, just stay there, just stay there for a second. Yeah. Well, and Tim, do you also remember, you know, when you were first saying where you thought the spy was going, you thought it was going to 420. Then it looked like it was going to hold at that 4, you know, 30, 32. Yeah. But it hit the 420. Yeah. Just stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oy, Tom O'Brien. I do appreciate your growl and prowl with us. We have the uh, Dow Industrials right now uh, up eight. NASDAQ is down two. S&P's off two. Okay, Tim, so uh, we're looking at this uh, S&P, the trend right now. Right, the S&P trend. Are, and actually, yeah, we were talking on the show. It was around that 430, 435 on the S&P's. And I lifted... Uh, just on a daily chart, all the ticks and trend readings on those days in that in that range, it was like 4.30 to, uh, to 4.45 or something. I don't remember exactly what the number was. But the 10-day trend never got up to one near 1.2. And so, and finally it did, and, it, and uh, as we broke through below that 4.30 area, that's when the panic really started to occur, and that's when, you know, Basically, a 10-day trend, you know, that's two weeks of pretty much selling because that's, you know, two weeks is, uh, is 10 days. No, no, I'm with you. And, and what so I meant... quite a bit of le- leaning on the sell button. Yeah, no, there's no doubt. And what I meant, you know, because do you remember at the beginning of this downdraft, you were looking for 420. And then yep. the market was stalling, you know, and it's like, okay, man, I mean, we've all done the same thing. It's like, oh, my God, I can't believe you, you get the right number at the right time. I mean, do you know what I'm saying? And it's like, okay, yeah. here we go. But because yeah. it, it is intriguing. That number is intriguing because, you know, it comes back to the breakout area, too, right? I mean, that's that's yeah. where it went. Yeah. Yeah, but we're just basically testing a, a trend line. So yeah. I'm thinking this is, is pretty good. But now let's look at another chart. So it's... There's more, okay. there's more indicators here. Uh, chart number five. Okay. Um, the, actually, 
the bottom window is what they call the Zag, Zwag, uh, Marty Zwag. He okay. died. Yes. But he was a, a brilliant, um, I don't know, trader, whatever. And yes. He made, uh, I don't know how much he made. He made a lot of money in the market. And he came up with this uh, his wag breath thrust indicator. And I kind of put it on a, uh, it's, it's uh, anyhow, I, I simplified it a little bit. It's, it's pretty close to exactly what his rules are, but what it is in general is the uh, NYSE advancing issues divided by NYSE total in- issues, and you take a 10-day, uh, yeah, 10-day, I think it's a 10-day, I can't quite read it. Yeah, it's a 10-day average, that ratio. When it falls below uh, 40.40, yes. 0.4, and rallies to 0.6, that's why you call it a, a uh, zwag breath thrust. Okay. And that's what, that's coming off of a low. So you, you really plunge down. Yep. And hit, it's and within, t- and then within 10 days, it has to get above 0.6. Right. So it has to happen in a 10-day period. It has to go below 0.4 to 0.6 in 10 days. That's, uh, and those blue lines show the times, or blue arrows show the times that has happened. So we're, um, we're 0.4 right now, but over the last couple of, it was a couple of days ago, I think it got down to 0.36. So we did hit below 0.40. What I'm hoping for on this next rally, within 10 days of hitting below 0.4, we hit above 0.6. Yes. And if we do that, that'll be a, uh, a Zwag breath thrust. And that, those type of things that come at uh, major market bottoms. Sometimes you get two or three. Sometimes you just get one. At that last low, you know, from May of, of 2020 to May of 2020, or 20, you know, 2000, May of 2022 to May of 2023, that happened twice. And I got it noted there. So that's the reason why it's kind of bullish intermediate term. That break thrust happened twice in that region. So I'm hoping it happens now. It depends on this next rally. And with Tim Go ahead. You know, with Tim saying here, folks, okay, this is so cool. You know, he does a lot with ratios. And as he's explaining this, you know, Tim, you, you can see, we both know when, when you come off bottoms, as, as Tim was just talking about, off big bottoms, you just, people can't believe that you can come off them with such strength. And when that happens, you normally do see two or three monster moves. So this is really cool, man. I'm, I'm, I, I like these ratios you're doing, Tim. I mean, it's, they're, they're really cool, man. I mean, because it, it, yeah, I well, think I it see. smooths things out. Do you know what I mean? It take, they yeah. take longer to basically come off. That would make sense, right? But the bottom line mm-hmm. is, is that that's, that's what you want. I mean, right? That's, that's how it comes down, man. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, especially you know, kind of hangs down there and and chops around, gets everybody really nervous. Uh, yeah, exactly. I didn't send another chart. I I got another sentiment chart, just kind of show where the public is. I didn't send that to you, but okay, uh, maybe we'll cover it next week. But anyhow, this is what I'm kind of looking for. It depends on this next rally. Will we get a breath, uh, a zwag breath thrust? That's hard to say for me. But anyhow, uh, you're doing a good thrust. job. If we get one, <laughs> then I'm thinking we're looking for an. Even though we may consolidate again, you know, to me that would be we're going to bust through those old highs we had back in uh, what late 2021 or early 2022. I can't quite see where it is, but I think we'll bust through those highs and possibly head higher. But also, one another thing. So we got the bottom window uh, again is the uh, the ratio of advancing issues divided by total issues. Take a 10 day average of it. I guess below minus 40. And also, when the RSI, which is the second window down from the top, yep. gets to below 30, when that combination happens, and those marked with red lines there, you're usually looking at some, at least on a short-term basis, at least a short-term bounce. So we're setting that a low just because the market's too extended to the downside. And plus, you know, on chart four, we got a lot of panic on that decline. Yep. So we got quite a bit of information that probably... You know, will it go up tomorrow? Don't know. Uh, but we're we're in the region of some sort of a worthwhile low here, and uh, and the jobs and the jobs next? number you know comes out tomorrow at eight thirty in the morning. So you know the unemployment number came out today, and that was light, man. I mean, you know, people getting on you know well, it was heavy actually. Um, you know, but that jobs number is going to be important because the ADT number, A, AP, yeah. 
anyway, whatever number that was, uh, commode yesterday, that was also soft. But you never can de really depend on that for the actual jobs number. Because if this jobs number comes in soft, this market's going to go. Because that would be saying that the Fed is basically done, you know, and then we'll see, okay, where the interest rate structure goes. You know what I'm saying? So that's going to be intriguing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm thinking so it could be already baked into the cake here. Um, you know, because we've got a, quite a few ingredients of, of a bomb. You got panic. Uh, you got this, you know, breath, his white breath strung, you know, selling out to the top, can it go lower, maybe. But usually it's where it stops, especially when the RSI is, you know, hit below 30. So I, I'm thinking, you know, that, that numbers, you know, smart money probably already knows what that is. That's what I'm thinking. But, you know, if, if that could really produce a decent rally, though, and if that Zweig um, breath thrust hits 60, you know, then I'm bullish until year end because I yeah. think you'll have some minor consolidations. But in general, I think this market will work right higher all the way into December. And that's what's uh, so cool there. about it hitting 60. So I can see what you're talking about for sure, man. Because then, then, and what happens technically on that, folks, is that the first rally coming off the lows the people that are shot won't cover it. Then you get another rally. Then it's like, then a lot of people cover it. Then you get the next rally that everyone has to cover it. Yeah, so. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. Tim and I are going to be coming right back, folks. You stay right there. We have the Dow Industrials down five. NASDAQ's up five. S&P's are up four. We'll come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim, we're Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us. And don't forget, folks, uh, Tim's got a great newsletter. You can reach Tim at Ord hyphen oracle.com that's odd hyphen oracle.com we have the dow right now down two nasdaq's off three s and is off four and uh looks like everyone's waiting for this jobs number tomorrow morning so okay yeah. so where would you like to go tim all right let's go to one okay chart one yep i got you all right so you know, this chart goes back to uh 2012 okay and it's the bottom window uh indicator which is a uh GDX uh, up down volume uh, percent with a 50 uh, day average. And, and the circled red stuff there is when that indicator got below minus 20. Yes. And if you go, and if you go up to the, the top window, which is GDX, when that thing hit, that bottom indicator hit minus 20, the market actually went, most times went fly, uh, sideways, if not down a little bit. Last time this happened was in um, August of 2022. It went down probably, looks like, about three, four months before the rally actually started. And the minus 20 hit back on, um, I think it was June June 13th of 2003. This thing hit uh, minus 20. So now that's higher than where the price is now. But if you look at the previous time it happened, the market kind of skidded down for another few months before the rally actually began. So when this indicator hits below minus 20, I usually say the decline's over. Either it flips sideways to modestly down. That's exactly what's happening. So uh, so now, okay, let's, let's flip to, uh, so anyhow, add uh, June 13th, you add four months, you come up with October uh We've gone sideways for about almost four months. Yeah, we have. Now, no, I can see the, that. Yeah, flip I, the charge two. Okay. Uh, this is kind of a blown up chart. The blue areas are when this indicator is above, uh, uh, I think it was minus or zero, but this is above zero. And when it's just non colored, when the indicator is below zero. Okay. But anyhow, if you look at the last time this happened, it, it was uh, July or August of 2022. You flipped sideways for six months. Then of uh, last year, that June 13th time frame, the market went side four months. And we, we got a signal here, uh, June, thir uh, June 13th, 23. So we're basically gone sideways for four months. And uh, the indicator has dropped down below a, a low level. Similar to what happened in 2022, that's if you go back to the bottom of the chart, that indicator I just circled in red. Yes, something similar. Um, so I'm thinking we're, we're doing okay. I mean, the market's supposed to be doing previously what it's done in the past. So let's flip to chart three. Okay. Now, now this is a little bit different indicator. Still the GDX up down volume, but it's an 18-day average. 
And the next one above it is the 18-day average of advanced decline indicators. And what I want to point out here is the positive divergence, what happened. You can take these positive divergence all the way back to 2012. The same thing happens every time. The S or the GDX makes lower lows, and both those indicators make higher lows. And I pointed those out with red arrows. Yes. So uh, to really get this rally going, you need a close above minus 10 on both those indicators and stay above minus 10. Last two rallies, uh, it, didn't, it didn't hold. It came back down one more time. But this, when the you know the previous on page one of this indicator, you know the market flips sideways for you know four or five, uh, sometimes six months. So we're in a four month time frame right now. So we're due for this indicators, both these indicators, to get above minus ten and actually stay above minus ten. Uh, I put my newsletter uh, last week that I did by options last Thursday. Okay. Which is a little bit higher than where we are right now, but the odds still say I'm probably price wise a pretty good price wise. I bought out December's December. Uh, okay, so so I got plenty of time. I think even though this market wiggles a little bit lower over the next week or two, time wise we're pretty good. We're pretty close for these two indicators to get above zero a minus ten rather and stay above minus ten. So we'll have to wait and see if I'm right or not. We'll be talking about if I'm wrong or right, I guess. We get, well, you know forward. what we need, Tim? We need some kind of a, like a drink that gives us all patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Actually, when I was younger, I, I didn't have patience for all this crap. You know? Oh, listen, just, man. You know, I remember saying to you on the air in like 96, man, like, yes, you're coming off saying this. I'm saying, What? Because my time frame then was like tenths of seconds. And like you're saying, a month and a half. This is a month and a half, man. What are you talking about? I mean, I, I have patience now. I have big patience now. I mean, I, you know, it's just, you learn it over the course of years. But I remember that so well, man. Like a month and a half. I mean, it's like, what? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's where the big yeah, money's yeah, made. That that's where the so, big yeah, money's made. Sometimes I'm a little bit early on these trades. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, I never probably will be cured of that because. Right. Um, but yeah, but sometimes I've nailed the lows here within a day or two. Mostly that's been luck. But um, a lot of times I got, the, as long as I got the bigger trend right. That's right. You know what I mean? I'll be okay. That's right. Um, and particularly because so, what happens, folks, these gold stocks get so low. And I know plenty of have own gold stocks. I mean, because you can get a double in about a heartbeat. You can get a double like in 10 days. You know, yeah. when, you know, well, well, I'm not talking about a stock that's 50, but these stocks that, you know, five or 10 bucks, they go in about 10 to 12 days and then they'll, they'll go even further. But that's how fast they come off the bottom because the market's so small. This gold market is so small, man. I mean, it's tiny, in, in, you know, in correlation to the amount of shares that are outstanding, the market caps, all of the above, you know, so. Right. And you know, over the last couple of years, you know, we've been, you know, we've been going up and down, but it's just been garbage moves. That's right. You know, that's uh, right. And at some point, they're going to leave everybody behind. They're, they're, you know, yeah. the rally's going to go. Everybody's going to sell, and the, and the market is going to keep going. And yeah, you know, we had, we had at some twenty. Point, that's going to happen again. Yeah, it happened in two thousand. Happened in two thousand. Well, two thousand ten. It was, it was basically a top went straight down, but that was a trending market, and so we're due for another trending market. Yeah, at some point, you know, right? And because garbage moves over time have, have led to impulse waves, you know, you you've got to figure out which which way that impulse wave is going to go. Yes. So um, I, I'm thinking this one's kind of lining up uh, to the upside. Well, it last, I don't know, you know, but we're due for a big breakout, you know. It no, I, I hanging uh, yeah. all time highs here, and uh, the the equity market or the gold. GDX market, you know, it's just, just kind of been garbage. It's just been setting low, not doing very well, and and you get short-term bounces that last, you know, maybe a month or two at most, and it comes right back down again. So, right. I don't know. We'll have to, to wait and see. Remember the good old days, you know, you got you know, you, you bought these 25 sip you know, gold stock <laughs> that went to teens and 20s. I know, you know, man. Yeah. So, yeah, was, Be between, you know, then. that a garbage stock, it turned into a garbage stock, but Coeur d'Alene, I remember I bought that at 30 cents and I think I sold it at 20 bucks, uh, 15 yeah. bucks. And then, I of course, had, I, I had BGO. And I, we had BGO. I around a quarter. Right, right. right. And, uh, and I 
uh, sold in, in, a, in a teen, like a 10 or 11 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, which is extremely happy. I don't know. So, well, listen, right. Tim, it's always a pleasure, man. You have a great weekend, a safe weekend. We look forward to speaking to you on Tuesday. Great. Thanks, Sounds man. Good. Stay Thank right you. there, folks. Come right back.